Okay, today I'm going to show you how to make a tablet monitor for a DSLR camera. Oh, looks like all this come to play with us. Um, okay, so the bits we're going to need for this, they'll all be listed underneath the tutorial, but um, the main bits you're going to need are going to be a Android-based tablet, and that is because the app that we're going to be using is uh, it's an Android app from the Play Store. You don't need to root the uh, the tablet or anything. Um, it's compatible with most tablets. Um, connections may differ across them, but we'll go through that later. Um, you can you can check the app on the Play Store. Like I say, there'll be a link, and you can check it all. It's got supported supported devices and supported cameras, but the device support is pretty good and the camera support is also really good. Uh, it goes all the way from the 550D right through to the most kind of modern, the most modern DSLRs at the moment. Um, I'm going to be using a slightly older one, I'm using a 600D and the tablet I'm using is a first generation Nexus 7 so it's also quite an old tablet. Um, but the, the app has been around for a couple of years, it's still in beta but it's I find it's very good. I've I've used it on on a lot of projects and I've never really had a problem with it. So today I'm just going to kind of show you how to get it set up. And realistically, if you've got a tablet that supports it and obviously a camera that supports it, the bits that you need to get the actual uh, get the actual monitor up and running, are very minimal. So the the cables you need to connect it up are just this this small adapter here which is called an on-the-go adapter which is basically a micro USB adapter um, so micro USB the one that kind of the flatter head the newer kind of version that you charge most Android phones with so you've just got that go into a standard USB port and then the idea is that the smaller end the micro USB Depending on your tablet type, you may need adapters or special mounts, but a lot of modern tablets just come with a micro USB port, so you can just plug that straight in and then run it off to any USB cable. So regardless of whether you're going to use this DSLR controller app, you can actually use this with a lot of other devices. You can plug in your, uh, you can plug in most cameras, you can plug in card readers, uh, you can even plug in self-powered hard drives and things like that and transfer files across to the tablet. So these for sort of, you know, a pound to a few pounds is a really good, really good thing to have. Uh, and then the thing I'm connecting to it is just a standard USB cable. Uh, it's a, for my camera, a mini USB. So they're slightly kind of fatter, kind of fatter USB cable. Um, your camera... It, it may have a newer style, style cable than mine, in which case you, you generally get supplied one of these cables with the camera. I'm just using one from a GoPro and that will be fine. You just need to make sure that the cable you're using is not too long because that can cause kind of um, connection issues between the tablet and the camera. And you also want to check that you're using a data cable, not a charger cable, because a charger cable won't carry the information that you need. You need you need a data cable to be able to do it. Um, so you can try a few cables, and you'll find out which ones work and which ones don't. But again, you know this is nothing special. So if you don't have a USB cable, you know you can buy these for you know pennies on eBay, really a pound, and you've got a good quality cable. Um, and then the other bits that we're going to be working with, they're all really just mounts. The cables are really all you need to get going, but you need something really to put the tablet on or it's not a very useful setup. So if I just get the, I get the camera on, so I've got a flip out LCD on this one, which we won't be able to use obviously once it's on because we're going to be running it off the, off the tablet. So if I just close that back down, the camera's on and ready to go. And just get this plugged into the side of there. Doesn't matter which order you do it in, as long as it's all plugged together and all working. So the USB goes into the on-the-go cable. And then it's usually best if you switch the tablet on and unlock it and do everything you need to do first. And then 
if it is plugged in this way around and you do plug the micro USB in, you'll hear the camera mirror lock up and then on the actual uh, on the actual tablet, once you've installed the DSLR controller app, the app is about, uh, I think, £3 last time I looked. I'm not going to show you how to install the app because I'm assuming you know how to install Android apps and things. So once you've bought it and downloaded it, um, when you plug it in, everything compatible with the USB on the go will come up on the screen. So we've got camera importer, DSLR controller, Nexus media importer, which is just another app that I've got. Oh, that's all it. Um, so we're going to go for DSLR controller and then let it do its thing and then as you can see that is the screen of the camera so I could point it at Olive and she's moving but no I can't focus because she's sniffing the camera now um, so if I, I can point it at the wall and I can do things like <laughs> she moves I can do things like I can I can do a full focus on the um, I can get up all of our all of our ISO settings for the camera. Um, I've got a battery indicator on there of what we've got. I can set I can set exposure levels. I've got all the aperture settings for the lens that I've got on there. All the shutter speeds. Um, we've got white balance and things like that there. Um, you can also switch across and you can just do um, plain pictures, whatever you want to do really. Like I say, you can you can do focusing just by touch. It's not going to focus so well on there because I'm using quite a quite a long lens. But um, you can you can flick across, like I say, go from that's uh, obviously that's video mode there. You can flick across into the camera mode and it won't actually require you to turn any of the dials on the camera it will just do that for you and then obviously you've got all the things here so you can you can take photos just from this one one view or you can record from that view as well so it's got quite a sort of robust set of tools you know everything you need really um okay so now it's set up it's just a case of having it in a useful way to use it so one of the ways you can use it, obviously, if you just do sort of tabletop photography or anything like that, you can kind of just have it in a mount like that, maybe have your camera on a kind of table tripod. That's a perfectly fine setup. I mean, this this is just a pound just from a cheap store. It's just a bit of plastic that holds it up. You can make a DIY one out of, you know, pretty much anything nowadays just to hold a tablet up. Um, the ones that I like to use, because I use my camera sort of out on the go doing things. Um, if I want to attach it to a tripod with my camera attached to the tripod as well, I'll generally use something like this, which is uh, it's basically uh, just a, a clamp with a tripod screw in it. Um, so you can use one of these, which is just a double headed tripod thread. I'll, I'll put links to all of these in there as well. I mean, then, like I say, they're not essential, but they're good to have. Um, so you can just stick that onto there. And then this bit, which is a really useful thing to have. I got this on eBay for £2.50, which I thought was really good. You can pretty much put most style of tablet into it, portrait or, sorry, <laughs> or landscape that way. And I'll just put this one in. So basically just sort of goes in with a little clip on the back. I found it to be a very a very solid mount, even though it's kind of so cheap. I've been quite impressed with how good it actually was. So um, you can you know you could increase sort of how kind of robust it is. You can maybe put banding on there or something just to make sure it's gonna stay. Um, but like I say it's been absolutely fine uh, for me at the moment. So with that on, you can kind of clip that onto there and if you've got a solid kind of front beam anywhere, you can clip that down. Um, if you could kind of have more of like a, a ball head on the bottom of it, then you can clip it onto your tripod legs and things so it's at a better angle. So you don't really want it just sideways or looking down, it's useful to have it up. 
but what probably one of the most used ways I would have it. So I've got just a rig here, so if you're on the go, having a rig is obviously really useful. So this rig is just, it's nothing particularly special, it's just called a Spider Steady rig. Um, they go for about, you could probably get one for 30 or 40 pounds I think on the internet at the moment. Um, so it's basically just a standard shoulder mount. I'll just open this out quickly. That's the shoulder part. Bring that down. Let me just lock it up. Undo it. Wrong way. <laughs> that didn't go so well. Okay. I'll just leave that on there. Okay, and then what you can do is just bring this rig in a bit closer. It's got these bits on here, so can screw that into the tripod. Actually, going to want to take the take the tab out while you're doing this, but. It's, don't want the tablet spinning around. I'm just trying to put this into here. And if you've got a washer or something, you can make that a lot more stable than that is because that's not really locked in exactly where I want it. So if you use a kind of M6 washer or something like that, then that's going to be pretty perfect. And then. Just get the camera on. We usually have obviously a bit more kit than this kind of going on, but just for this kind of tutorial. There you've got your camera, your screen set up on the side, and that's for me I find that's quite a perfect way to kind of be filming because you can, I've got viewfinders and things for the back of the camera and they are really good but at the same time it's quite nice to sort of be kind of open to look around you as well as being able to see it on a nice big screen and the other good thing as well because you've got um, control over the actual brightness of this screen it's much better in bright light because the ones on these little LCDs they're not so good they're they do hold up a little bit and when you've got a little viewfinder on they're okay but I just find this it's got a bit more flexibility a bit more control and if you're not sort of out and about you can have somebody else if you you know if you want to just do photo shoots or something like that you can have someone that's just reviewing the pictures quickly as you're going and it's just perfect as a you know external screen or just just an extra kind of live view here it's just you know, for a few pounds, it's just, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer, really, just to uh, just to get it set up and use it. And the the way it will kind of work with uh, in terms of saving pictures, uh, they're still all being saved to your phone, but you've just got the control to actually save them onto there. But also, uh, your tablet might support it by default, but... Uh, you may you may need an app. You could, there's probably plenty of free ones out there, but um, with the on-the-go cable as well, you'll have the option to be able to back your things up onto your tablet, which is quite nice. So uh, quite often, if I've taken a few good good runs, I'll I'll just kind of get them onto the tablet, and then I've got them backed up, and I know that I know that they're kind of they're there and they're safe, and I'm not going to lose them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of um, that's kind of everything really like I say the the setups will will kind of vary that's just the just the setup I've got here with uh, my Nexus 7 and my 600D but if uh, if you've got any questions or you're having problems with a certain configuration or anything feel free to uh, leave a note in the comments but the first place to go before you start buying any of these bits or doing anything check out the DSLR controller app on a Play Store check out the support that it's got for tablets, check out the camera support that it's got. And then, like I say, you know, it's the app is totally worth buying for a few quid. And the on-the-go cable as well, it's a no-brainer for kind of 
you know, a pound or a few pounds is they're great just to extend the kind of functionality of your camera. And um, yeah, that's that's everything. So like I say, you know, leave leave a comment if you want to ask anything. And um, yeah, good luck with your uh, good luck with your build.